the network. What's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and welcome to Music News That Matters, where on the first of each month, we help you sift through the noise to bring you the most important industry news. We know there's so much information out there, but we're going to focus on the topics the most important to you, as always. Today, we're covering a range of weird and wonderful topics. Like we've got Spotify's Q1 report, which came out today, which gave some interesting insights. We're going to talk about the new coronavirus fundraising initiatives from streaming platforms. And we're also going to talk about deepfakes and Lego, both of which are going to impact the music industry, believe it or not. And before we get started, since these videos are only once a month, Make sure you sign up to our newsletter, and even more importantly, subscribe, like, so you can stay updated when we drop new videos and content. And as you may know now, we're, you can listen to the podcast on the go. All the episodes, including all the future ones, are going to be on all streaming platforms, so Spotify, Apple Music, SoundCloud, wherever you get your podcasts. Perfect. Let's get into it, man. It's been a, a heck of a month. A lot is going on, as always, even though... You know, it seems like less is going on these days. You just have to dig a little deeper for the story. So what did what, you find, man? I'm excited to have this combo. So today, obviously, we're recording with the 29th of April now, and Spotify just dropped their Q1 report today for their, you know, their earnings and profit margins. And the, the top line is that they have gained new subscribers up 6 million, so now nearly 130 million. Um, by comparison, Netflix went up 15.8 million. They're only expecting to go up 7 million. So they had a massive increase. Spotify were kind of about on track, maybe like, maybe like half a million up, what they were predicting. So it's good news in the sense that streaming is, you know, still climbing. But obviously some of this quarter was before the lockdown and coronavirus. So Q2 will be more interesting on that front. What was interesting was Daniel Ek giving his, you know, feedback and report on these on this Q1 earnings and he said a few interesting things first I want to talk about the um, the Spotify freemium model and he thinks it's a really sort of like a really big advantage for Spotify to have the you know the premium and the free tier obviously with Netflix you subscribe <laughs> or you don't but with Spotify you could downscale your subscription to the free tier and apparently according to the report one in six who unsubscribed from premium said it was due to, you know, coronavirus and lockdown money wise, but 80% of those said they would return. And he feels that it's a big advantage to have this sort of like free tier, but I don't, I don't know what your thoughts are on versus the, you know, you subscribe or you don't. I mean, I think it's good to have the, you know, the opportunity to listen to music on, on shuffle, but obviously it wasn't always originally a thing with Spotify. Yeah. So you're telling me that he actually looks at it less than an upsell, but more of a a uh, downsell and recapture. That's the benefit. Well, yeah, like like a fail safe. Yeah, like a, like a safety net. Got it. I can't really. I mean, obviously, I don't see the stats, and he's seeing something that apparently is showing. I wonder if they had a period before that they are they're juxtaposing it with. Because if if other than that, then like if it's working and one is better than the other as far as their data goes, you can't really argue with that, right? Mm. The data is what it is. We weren't doing this as a fail safe and we had this retention or a return rate after canceling. And then after the fact, we added this program and now an increase. And I can see that, right? because uh, it keeps you in relationship with that program and then just uh, and, and keep you in the the hemisphere to start to say hey well you know what i'm tired of this this or i want some of those other options that i used to have so i can see that um but if we were talking more on the freemium model i wouldn't necessarily agree in their case i don't i wouldn't know if it actually is something that just more so keeps people from making a, de a decision that wouldn't be on that platform to that capacity in the first place. I mean, or that, that could be, and then also giving people access to the platform that wouldn't be able to afford it in, in the first place. So from that standpoint, the only benefit to me would probably be the additional data that you get to have. Well, advertising dollars, I don't, I, from what I've seen, so far, it doesn't seem like that's that huge of a 
uh, benefit for, for them or that big of a part of their, their profits. But uh, just to, again, the data to be able to have that many more people because they have, how many, do you um, recall how many free people they have versus subscribed? It's still more people that are free tier than subscribe right now, right? Um, let me get the exact, I'll get the exact figures up. Um, but what, what I find interesting about this is that obviously he's very confident that they're going to come back. And obviously we, that's what I'm fascinated to see whether they really are going to come back to the premium model. They might like the free tier and feel not, not, not feel the need to you know, upgrade again. And obviously, he's got to say this to appease the Wall Street investors right now, saying, oh, don't worry, they'll come back. You know, a lot of people are, obviously. In Spain and Italy in particular, there's been a lot of like downgrades in subscriptions. But okay, so they're relating this specifically to this time period, corona, quarantine, mm. losses of jobs. So they, okay, so they're looking at it specifically in nature of the climate right now okay yeah but he's really he's really positive like backing thinking it's you know it's a really good idea to have this in place but it'll be interesting to see how this actually materializes if they, if they are going to come back they might farm they like what they've got on the free tier so it's interesting to see how confident he is that they'll come back yeah i i agree from the standpoint of a lot of people will realize, you know what, I didn't need all that other stuff anyway. And I am, I do kind of just want to listen to random music and treat it kind of like a Pandora um, type platform. Then on the other, I'm sure there's some people where his thesis works out as well. It's just a matter about whose thesis is most right and or it, can their goals be uh, met still. I, it's, it's interesting, though, because subscriptions as a whole, obviously, are taking a toll. You just reminded me that I still need to <laughs> cancel my, my gym uh, membership because I, I haven't been in the gym in two months. Why do I, why do I need it right now, right? Um, but music is such a luxury in so many ways that I can see a lot of people really not coming back. So I found the stats. So 130 million paid subscribers now as of today, this report. And okay. I believe it's 270 million in total. So there actually is only 10 million more free than there is paid now. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. That's nice. They're gaining on, um, mm. they're gaining. I wonder how much of that are people that converted or, or how much was that? It was just new market share that caught up to the freemium model. Hmm. It was looking at obviously because ad revenue naturally is obviously falling because obviously you know making everyone's making cutbacks. Yep. So it's good in the sense you know it's positive to see them still growing at this time. So obviously they obviously need to. Right. Yeah. This this Spotify thing, man. I think um, when it comes to this whole subscription aspect of well, just this whole relationship with Spotify in general we've seen so many things that a lot of people didn't expect when it came to obviously music falling a lot of, especially in, in a, um, terms of a lot of new trending um, listening to music which also brought about a fact that i didn't know that traditionally music is um drops on weekends pre-corona is less listened to um on weekends and i feel like if i knew that that would have been kind of an indicator of this as well because obviously on the weekends you're less at work you're doing more of just what you want to do in general versus consuming music kind of to get by <laughs> and keep you so, so yeah but i this is an interesting time when it when it comes to the uh substance i wish i i had more insight i i i, I guess daniel Eck is saying something that he knows i want to give him the benefit of the doubt but there is also that airing on the side of he just might be pleasing investors, like you just stated, you know. He was also quizzed on after the report, he got had an interview with Music Ally and they quizzed him on the new artist fundraising pick. So I'm not sure if you're aware, obviously last month we talked about they're going to add in this like donation tipping feature and it's now available instead of the artist like track pick, you can choose on your Spotify writers to have an artist fundraising pick where you can put a link to a charity or a link to your cash app or PayPal. And he was asked whether this is going to stick around. Because that's the big thing everyone's wondering is, if this, is it going to be taken out again once this um, crisis is over? And he seemed to indicate that 
nothing set in stone, but the feedback has been very positive. Over 50,000 artists have used it so far. So he was saying there's certainly no reason to take it out. Yeah, so the question is like, is this opportunistic or is this a true a true uh, add-on and feature? And when I look at it, what I thought was brilliant about that story was actually from the cash app angle, honestly, and how they're incentivizing artists with that extra $100. Um, yeah, for the, for the first, there's a million dollars, isn't there? And then everyone, well, the funds who use the cash app get the $100 bonus if they get donations, yeah. Like that, that's the viral loop and how you want to build uh, additional uh you know user user base when it comes to a uh, platform so i love the fact that cash app is doing that just from a business standpoint i think obviously it's going to work because why wouldn't people not go ahead and get that extra hundred dollars is banks do that all the time too right you open an account you get an extra two hundred dollars if you jump through all these hoops for six months but um i think i think that's really cool when it comes to the fundraising feature though in general i actually kind of didn't understand it it just felt like fluff for me. well I'm, I'm not a fan of it um i, I think i i think um other pl platforms are doing it better so the example for spotify you've got a cho they give you a choice obviously you can either choose links to a charity or you can put your cash app or paypal in this is presenting artists with like a difficult dilemma here because obviously naturally the bigger artists are going to plump for the charity you know to help raise money and support and obviously fans are going to look upon that very favoringly if you're an independent artist, you've got this like dilemma whether you want to, you know, how you want to present yourself to your fans. Because obviously a lot of fans probably think you've got a lot more money than you actually do. And they actually might really need this money, but might feel pressured into giving to charity instead on, on the page. So this, this is a very, this becomes a very big dilemma for them, like a lot of guilt tripping. Whereas other platforms, like TikTok has just got straight up, just got a charity donation feature. So you choose a charity and the money goes to them. There's no like, because you can already get money for tipping live on that platform. Mm -hmm. So they've done it right, just giving you a charity way. And SoundCloud's support button feature lets you choose a link during complete control. That could be a charity, that could be, you know, PayPal or Cash App, but that could also just be a link to your website to sell your merch or to Bandcamp. You've got a lot more control with SoundCloud. And with TikTok, there's already best of both worlds. But Spotify's given you this very difficult problem about how you want to present yourself and your fans. So I don't think it's been handled the best way. Well, that's why I was wondering, like, why was, why did they even add it? I wasn't familiar that everybody else added it. So maybe, okay, now we want to keep, keep up with the wave of what everybody else is doing. Of course, there's a lot of copycat, but at the end of the day, I don't, that, that yeah, that's not the artist's responsibility. Like if they could, cause you could very well say through your own tipping feature, you could say, I'm going to donate all this to charity. Mm. It have to be a charity specific feature so that is weird but at the end but why would we expect spotify to do anything else right <laughs> they it's mm. when, something like this you look at tiktok and all the other platforms they're doing what you said where it's kind of the onus is on them to to set up the system and handle that spotify has repeatedly when it benefited them put all the onus on the artist where it seems like we're doing something good, but it really is giving all the work for the good to them. Like they get the good of, hey, we brought this feature here. There's the yeah. PR. We're done. Right. <laughs> and now all the work is on the artist. So like that's that's just how the platform has moved for the last five years, it seems like at least. Well Daniel Lake obviously admitted that they rushed this feature out because they needed to get it out because everyone else was sort of like doing it or thinking about doing it and they just need to have something in place so they're responding to the crisis but the way it's structured you know you can either choose like GoFundMe or straight to Spotify's COVID-19 project or you put PayPal or Cash App there's such few like options and you know oh, you cash. I didn't realize <laughs> so then you can get in bed with their specific project too Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's all carefully, it's all carefully planned. Yeah. That's yeah. Crazy. Oh, this was, this was so rushed. We didn't even think about it, which is a nice scapegoat for it being done. Well, the accusations like what we were talking about right now, why this, this kind of lends towards your own political connects or reasoning or whatever you're doing. So yeah, we can always lean on, well, we just rushed this. We didn't really think it through. Because um, Bobby oh, Zinsky did an article. 
Yeah. Bobby Ozinski did an article for Forbes saying that he hopes that, you know, it doesn't put artists under too much pressure and that fans may look upon them, you know, for the altruistic reasons you should, you know, give, you know, give to charities instead, but some fans may look upon it unfavorably to be asking for money for artists. So you just got to hope that the balance is there, but. Yeah, that's the reason for fan education, man. Like, we need these yeah. fans to understand that artists really don't make money like that. But even more so, we need these artists to like quit parading around as if they have more and not being afraid to say we only have this much right now. Yeah, they right? they shouldn't feel guilty for asking for it on there. And this is what this kind of adoption of it could indicate that they, they might. Like it's not the best way to handle things. Yeah, I think somebody at some point will be more open about it. Actually, fair fair enough, Cardi B was pretty open about that. And even when she wasn't in a a rut, because sometimes people will come more open about those things when they're in a rut. But I remember a year or two ago, Cardi was explaining how she puts her own money up for for the show she was doing, and she was paying 300 k for this, and like her outfit maintenance costs this, and she was just putting that out there. But she... She's she's kind of a a rare bird where it doesn't seem like she hides much or it allows any of those airs to come onto her to to back back. But I think if a few more artists really start to do that and just make it clear, fans will know. Hey, I want to support my artists that much more, more um, that much more. Now, if there's a way to do that without bringing the the record label side of things now because then it'll be even um, better because obviously I think a lot of fans would be, they would be shocked, disgusted, surprised if they really knew, right. What the splits and what their, where their money went when it comes to them thinking they give, they're giving to an artist in most cases. Hmm. And especially so to give more information on the TikTok one, um, obviously you can already get tipped via live streams like directly you know, as a creator, so they've chosen to focus purely on, you know, raising money for, you know, certain organizations with these donation stickers. So um, they, they use the hashtag double your impact. So if, you, if you're a creator, you can put a sticker on your story and you can choose which um, you as a creator choose where it goes to. So at the moment you can go to CDC Foundation, James Beer Foundation, Meals on Wheels, Music Cares, um, National PTA the Actors Fund, there's a few more as well. So you get to choose where it goes to out of those. And you obviously click the button and obviously choose how much you want to donate. TikTok's going to match that donation as well up until May 27th, whatever you put in, TikTok will also put in. Nice. I think so it's just a much smarter way of doing it. The, and the, yeah, you can essentially market it as an influencer where it sounds like you can really put multiple out there and bring attention to multiple versus having to choose one and have a a specific space where it belongs for a given amount of time. Am I hearing that correctly? Yeah, each video could be different. You could choose a different one for that. The, but you, you get to choose where your yeah where the donation goes to on that particular video, not the not the uh, user. Yeah, I like that. I like that. And <laughs> honestly, giving and all those types of things are so trendy on TikTok. And we had this one campaign that had to do with the Australia fires, right? Mm -hmm. And <laughs> we start the Australia fires I, was were actually still going on, but it had been a news story for maybe just a few weeks or whatever. And not only were they still going on, yes, they were at the tail end. When the fires are over, there's damage that's there, right? Uh, the users on TikTok, a lot of these kids, they're like. I don't really want to do this because, you know, that's kind of old news. It's, the trend is over. No yeah. one, they, they didn't, they weren't able to associate the fact that, yeah, this thing created damage. It's not over just because it's not being spoken about, right? It's, it, this is something that um, it needs money raised for, for some time and it's going to be happening for some time. So they have an, a detachment for, from that. But on the inverse of that is, they really go hard in those scarce windows the yeah. because of the trend, right? And, and make it cool and it makes them look good. They're very, without knowing it, they're very uh, aware of PR. I'll, I'll say that, like for their own profiles. Absolutely. But it's just, 
it's a not much better way of doing it. Obviously, just going back to that main point that you know TikTok were quite smart about this. SoundCloud didn't force anyone into a box either with their approach, but Spotify really have you know as Daniel X said, they rushed into it and they haven't really thought about it. So it's just a bit disappointing for now. This shines on a weakness of Spotify um, that we've kind of touched on in some of our convos, not necessarily on here, where Spotify does not really seem to have this huge awareness when it comes to user behavior and catering to the user. They're really amazing when it comes to just the function of playlisting and maximizing that capability and the algorithm around it, all that stuff. But when it comes to just paying attention to the end user and what best serves them, what makes their lives easier, they have all these conflict of interest. And this is just one small, small, you know, but significant uh, reflection of that where TikTok, the way they're doing that, it makes it easy and where you almost want to because it's so easy and uh, where the Spotify is already bound by some of these social tensions that we, we're talking about, right? Mm-hmm. Where you should just build it where it's thoughtful enough, where people do it almost due to incentive. Everything should be fr- frictionless, right? That's how tech platforms are, are, are best built. It, it just seems like for whatever reason, man, that their, their design thinking and, and attention to those smaller details, they they fall short time and again. It was like last month we were really talking about, you know, where's this button going to go? And we were worried it was going to go with the other links to social media. So you have to go into their about page and then find it and stuff. Like luckily they've used it to replace the artist pick who is quite near the top, but I didn't, yeah. think, didn't think they were going to do that before, but it's little things like that. Like we shouldn't have to be, we shouldn't have to be debating where it's going to go. It should be, you know, like with TikTok, it's a sticker on, on the video. It makes perfect yeah. sense. We shouldn't have to be, yeah anticipating what they're going to do for it, how to market it. Because obviously that shows a lack of, you know, user friendliness that we're having to debate where it would be best to go. Yep. So there's not a lot to figure out. Exactly. Carrying on, with, carrying on with, with TikTok, another thing I want to get your thoughts on, obviously, as, you know, running sort of TikTok campaigns yourself, is the idea now that labels are taking a decision to, cho- to change the names of tracks after they've already come out because they are not so search friendly. So, for example... Electronic producer Surf Messer, he had a single called uh, ILY, which did, did very well on TikTok and, and on Spotify. And obviously, people were searching for I Love You and it wasn't coming up. So, therefore, there's a, there's a dilemma. So, I took the decision to call it ILY brackets, I Love You, I Love You Baby, I should say. Um, so, what, what are your thoughts on? So are we going to see a new trend now of all the songs like being named exactly what they should be from the start? Or are we going to see a lot of these sudden name changes? I think you're going to see a lot of sudden name changes among the ones that start to get traction, right? right. It'll have to be worth it after it hits a certain threshold. But the beauty of this is people are starting to realize that TikTok is one, that music discovery platform, but also this embedded search engine. It's been that way from the beginning in a way that a lot of people haven't really paid attention to. Even, and you can see this coming even before their library was really built out and the partnerships were in a better place because our run campaigns and just, well, you know, if you, if you pay attention to the kids, which they've started doing, I started doing probably a, at least a year back, right? You'll, you'll have a song name and then you'll have parentheses the rest of it yeah you pay attention a lot of people don't realize i can't remember which one name was first now but um doja cat song had two names and eventually it became another name um i think i don't know i think they might call it moo now but at one point it was bitch i'm a cow or something like that right and and then all of a sudden they added the second title until it kind of got searched enough or had enough visibility where they removed, um, kind of forgot about the other title. Some of it might've been for search engine regions. Some of it might've been for um, some other just censorship reasons in that particular case. But the need for being agile only increases in a fast moving digital era where so much stuff has the opportunity to get moving 
without you knowing. We're almost in a reactionary marketing climate where the goal is to put shit out there in the best positioning to move far, but you're not sure if it moves far. So once you put things in a position, you watch. And based on what happens, you need to now be able to steer the ship to get to your end goal, right? Whether that means I'm letting the fan select the song off of the project based on how many, you know, who, which one is most listened to or based on what are people calling it? Because if people are calling mm -hmm. this, calling it that, why would I not uh, go with what they, uh, they uh, have called it? So quick story, there's this drink called Hypnotic, very popular in the early 2000s uh, right. for, because of its color, it was blue. And they, uh, it was actually initially called Hypnotique, right? But after just kind of pushing it, getting it out there, they heard somebody say, yo, man, that hypnotic, like they just said it. And yeah. then, oh, bam, I'm going to use that, that name, right? It makes sense to call it what other people are calling it, and that's a lot catchier, et cetera, et cetera. It's the same thing. All this stuff applies, and you're, you're going to get the best successes out of it. So for labels to be able to change that, because we can change that just do an organic uploaded sound, but they're going to want to do it through the most efficient, trackable source, which that library system still has so much gains to do. I, would, I want it to, do, it to be the best route. It just isn't yet yeah. um, um, a lot of times. But yeah, it's, it's, it only makes sense in whatever way possible, do Spotify, uh, whether it's Spotify, TikTok, any function of marketing to be able to be changed after the fact in some form or fashion based on the feedback that we're getting. Because it gets me thinking, like if you're an artist and you, you know, you've got your song coming out or it's out already and you've now identified the 15 second clip you want to use for TikTok campaigns. If your mm -hmm. song title is not in that 15 second clip, you've got to change it really. In this, in this current that's, situation. That is, uh, yeah, that's a great observation. That's probably a good way to think about it. That's, that's what I was just thinking about now as this conversation has been going. I'm thinking, yeah, you really need to capture, you, you've got that 15 seconds to capture them. They need to remember a key buzzword from it. But, yeah. So Think about get, uh, Renegade. And it's, it's a few songs like this where the song took off, but the part on TikTok that took off actually preceded the song. Yeah. <laughs> the song wasn't even in the viral clip. It was just the lead up and the, you know, producer tag. You know, there are so many songs where they haven't actually used the chorus in the clip. So therefore, it, again, that changed the whole thing. Like if you've been, you know, marketing your song around the chorus and, you know, using the name from the chorus, if that's not the bit that hits, you have to adapt quickly. It's, so it's all just... about what works, man. It's all about what works. Not what you, and I, it's interesting because I wonder if artists are going to get more comfortable with this because artists have become more and more marketing savvy and, and as they come up in these ages they don't have some of the same stigmas around a lot of that stuff as past generations because you know when you go artist of artist type mentality no this is the name of my song <laughs> you know what yeah, i'm saying yeah exactly like, yeah this is the package this is how i want want it to be i'm not changing it to some random title just because kids are calling it that but yeah i think that might be uh, evolving when we look at the mentality of some of these artists and how they approach their careers. And the, the bigger picture, which is like the best thing about this is that we're naturally moving towards more of like a, a smart speaker voice activation, like generation now, you know, they're, they're in more than 50% of the homes in the U S smart speakers now. And I'll see voice search is going to be very, very important for the top songs. And if you've got a search friendly song, you're ticking all those boxes. So, so again, it's even more important, not just in TikTok, but overall as we you know, move towards this sports activation um, sort of like market. Because there's a report that came out today saying that by 2024, there's going to be more um, voice activation um, devices than there is people on the planet. So it is all moving towards that direction. So it's very, very important that you've got these search-friendly terms for your songs. Man, that's an interesting step. <laughs> it makes sense, obviously, since so many people have multiple, but that's that's interesting to hear. Um, one thing that I just randomly thought about due to this whole search engine thing um, is actually there's one artist 
that I was working with, his search, his SEO was so bad. And we were trying to get it going on TikTok. And no matter what, when people would try to search it, it was so incongruent on different platforms, YouTube, it has a dollar sign here, over here, it, it right. doesn't, and all these different things. It was so hard to find, and it was dope, really dope artists, really dope concepts. Uh, I really loved what he was doing, but that particular issue is a real thing because at that time you have people going from TikTok to Google search. Nope, not if you don't pop up, that's an issue. Or TikTok yeah. to Spotify, right? All these kind of how um, you know I've had that search engine conversation at large, comparing the platforms and um, yeah, Amazon. Spotify essentially is a, is a music search engine at this point, right? And, 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 and took that niche in that marketplace. So it's um, everything is searched these days. Like if you, if when it comes to discoverability, if the easier that is, again, the lower friction, because if I can't find it, you would like me to say, I want to go check it again later, but that's probably not how my attention span is going to work. No, so I think like the, the Gen Z trend of like having them miss, you know, missing out the vowels and putting in numbers instead of letters, like that's going to that's gonna quickly fade out now, I, I think. Yeah. But I could be wrong, but... <laughs> yeah, I, that was... That's so funny uh, that you say that because whenever I see it now, I've started to realize, yo, this is going to be one of those marks of an era. Like when you look back, yeah, like the 80s and how all the, like the fonts that were used and things like that, just like from what is it mid 2000s to, i mean well no like maybe like 2014 on everybody started to use yeah <laughs> the missing vowels all those things for search engine purposes though to be fair right yeah it was just but now when we go back to voice as you as you kind of alluded to though that kind of put makes that null and void because this, I found the stat now. So it's from a, a Juniper research report came out today saying that there'll be uh, yeah, 8.4 billion voice activation devices. Obviously, a lot of those are going to be smartphones. But right. that, is, but that is, you know, a massive jump. That's, that's uh, double what it is now. It's predicted to be. How many humans are, are there? Good question. I know it's over 7.5. Uh, was it 8? Uh, have we hit I thought it was seven plus billion somewhere. Okay, I just felt that was a weird question to ask. It felt weird. It's, it's weird, but I, I respect it. Um, <laughs> seven point five nine four billion as of two thousand eighteen. Okay. So mm -hmm. okay. I think it's seven point eight now. There you go. Seven point eight billion. All right. You learn nice. something new every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another win for procreation. Exactly. Sticking with TikTok for one last bit, there's one random thing that I've seen today that I was quite intrigued by. A, um, a company called Boogie AI, they're a new tech startup, and they are working on deep fakes that are going to automate making TikTok dance videos. So if you're not a very good dancer yourself, you'd be able to use this deep fake software so it looks like you're actually dancing these videos, doing these insane moves, and people might be none the wiser if, if it all goes to plan. I'm just wondering how this is going to impact the social media, the TikTok game and the influencer game. Like if, sure. if there becomes a level playing field with dancing, that's going to sort of like uh, damage that influencer section of, of marketing on the platform. Well, I don't know, man, because honestly, when you look at TikTok, it's not the, the best dancers that are big. TikTok has a very specific image that they want to put out and they make sure that those people have the most followings that to be honest like the people who are the best dancers they they aren't necessarily um yeah they don't have the they, they a lot of them don't even have a million followers but people who can do the the hand moves and they have a certain look and, and, and face that they want to market because it, it it seems the way and i'll say this because well, I know the article came out about TikTok not giving bully, uh, no, disabled people a certain level of attention, right? Yeah, there's, there's a whole thing about people. that, yeah. Yeah, right? And they said it was for bullying reasons, which, you know, what, whatever, fair enough. But 
the the reality is if you look on TikTok and you're on there fair enough, it's pretty clear that there there's some prejudice. That it's not their call though. Happen. Yeah, they should be making that decision. Yeah. Yeah, like there 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 seems to be some prejudice that lies, um, for better or worse. But you, that's just that's anecdotally, right? I'll I'll I'll, I'll say that, right? Um. So with that being said, my issue is less that because I don't think that part of it will affect it. it. It might help some people become an influencer that wouldn't have the same level of impact, but mine is more social commentary from the standpoint of, man, it just sounds, I just miss people not being able to do shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, just, like okay, just not being good enough to do shit and then going and find, finding shit that they were good enough to do versus <laughs> being able to hack it and, and get a high off of, looking like they can do it or looking like they have it so that's that's really my take from that whole thing what could be fun though is that imagine if you've got like parents on the platform and then and they're going to make videos using this software and then get their you know their kids to react and stuff could be quite amusing for the older generation on the platform that would be cool um, it's, it's hard for me to see it much past trend. It'd be like a five minute wonder trend. Yeah. But that's, yeah. that's sort of probably the market they're going to be more going towards, I would feel. Yeah. You know, from a positive standpoint, maybe, well, does it take the dance movements you make and then make them better do deep fake or does it just literally take your face and then put it on a better dancer? There's, well, they say, say that the only limit is your imagination. Uh, in, in there, there's, there's, there's not there's not a lot of information to go off on this company profile, other than that these realistic digital doppelgangers can change clothes, travel the world, and try out the latest TikTok dances. The only limit is your imagination. There you go. Oh right. <laughs> <laughs> but their goal the goal is the best bit. Our goal is to democratize the social media fantasy by giving everyone the chance to live and create in a world without limits. There you go. That is uh, Boogie AI, the name of this company, this startup. Yeah. Crazy, man. Democratize something that matters, man. Good Lord. Um, <laughs> man, that's crazy. But it's a matter yeah. of time before deep fakes came to TikTok, though, in some way or the yeah. other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, at that point, we're getting into like, ultimately some of the other weird weird stuff like singularity and things like that at some point just that constant push for people to create all the fakes or the yeah or yeah i don't know man have you seen That's that um jay-z tried to like sue a startup recently because they started they posted um videos using his like especially and generated his voice and got him to like read shakespeare or sing We Didn't Start the Fire by Billy Joel. They made these YouTube videos of Jay-Z, like, doing all this stuff, and he sued them for, like, intellectual property, like, <laughs> like stealing his identity. That's Pretty awesome. Funny. Like, for, for entertainment reasons. And yeah. that's awesome that he sued him. I like the fact that he's an artist that has the power to do that, because this, this intellectual property, man, is so important. It cannot be understated, but I think most people are still letting it get over get um get over them. I know actually we're going to kind of touch on a little bit of that at some point in this convo. But like in a world where labels are able to impact and slow so much of the advancement and innovation in technology when in, in how we consume things pretty much solely because they own right these things that we're trying to use they own the catalogs which is intellectual property at the end of the day they own these artists likenesses and things like that so you start adding virtual reality to, and um the ability to bring people back ver with those uh holograms and yeah. all these yeah. things just and then just to add the fact that content is at a huge increase in general and it's easier to create things like cartoons and so many things it's so important to be able to not only own that but be able to defend it. So it makes me happy that he, he did it at the end of the day. I want to be able to make sure I can do that for myself, all this random, weird, deep fake stuff and, and all that stuff that happens. 
I'm not sure how it's it's back up on YouTube again now though, so I'm not sure it was a completely successful attempt. I don't know whether he went all the way through with it or he didn't Keep like off of YouTube is a whole nother story. <laughs> yeah, but it's the same company. They re uploaded the videos of him. They got taken down and then they got re uploaded. So I gotta see that. I'm trying to open up the story now. Jay-Z learned to sing that's 27, 11 years ago. Because the... Oh, yeah, I don't see it, man. But either way it goes, the conversation still lies. Maybe he found some kind of partnership. Who knows what happened? Yeah. Uh, or you know, maybe I'm just trying to find it now, but yeah, it's, it's it's just interesting. Like, so rock, right, yeah, rock nation filed the takedown. The group is called well, the channel's called Vocal Synthesis. Um, so the videos have resurfaced again, and rock, right, yeah, rock nation claimed that the content unlawfully uses AI to impersonate our client's voice, and it, I think I think the set to continue this uh, fiasco. Yeah, I think they're going to carry on pursuing legal action, but yeah. it hasn't, hasn't gone through yet, but it's certainly an interesting one. Yeah, that stuff takes time. Um, but, you know, it's, we're also in a place where, fortunately or unfortunately, that kind of stuff is good marketing, right, and PR. I'm going to do this, hope to get sued. And then that sue just goes into my marketing budget because now I can release a statement that this big artist that everybody's gonna copy, like this story, this big artist is <laughs> has, yeah, has yeah. For doing this cool viral thing. And the, the last weird story that I wanna end on is the deal that went through this week about uh, Universal Music Group doing a big partnership with Lego, <laughs> uh, which is, yeah. One of the weirdest ones I've seen this year has to be said, but the <laughs> idea is that they're gonna they have there's no there's not really many details about this, but it's gonna be creating sort of like you know obviously children's toys around around music. So this could be like maybe like Lego sets of artists who are signed to UMG, maybe talks of like a proper like Lego style like keyboard, in like Lego inspired keyboard, but. Yeah, are we, are we going to start to see le- like Lego sets of yeah, like some big artists like in in their like studio or I mean it's it, certainly strange. I, man, just because one, there's already there's always the fat fanatics that are going to collect anything around an artist, hmm. but you're talking about the brands that UMG houses met with the brand of Lego itself. It's a very legitimate brand where there's people who collect Legos and all of the different sets just because it's Lego, right? So there's definitely some interesting things to come. Um, I also, you know, like kind of touched on uh, the fact that Lego has created its own characters and worlds, especially as the the uh, movies have taken off. Yeah, haven't yeah. Watched the one, but the first one was, was, was definitely good. Um, like so, as uh, as those things continue to come, they have music in relation to them, soundtracks in relation to them. But then, of course, back to IP, right? Maybe they want those characters to enter into some musical world. And even there's some yeah. some robot chick. When I was in LA, I can't remember her name, but there's this this robot that has like two million followers, and it's I don't know if her singing is AI or they have somebody else do the same for her, but at least the actual influencer, it's like a full on influencer taking pictures with people with it and she looks somewhat realistic. So like maybe they can even yeah. go, they might want to go that direction with some Lego characters, who knows? And obviously all, all, all kids love music as well. So, and obviously they're going to be growing up on TikTok. Therefore they might want to buy, you know, get these sets of their favorite artists as well. So it's a big market to go into, especially with obviously you've got like Spotify is really going in on kids right now as well with their own like Spotify for kids sort of like app and programs and stuff. So that's that's very real because they need a TikTok for kids, man. The the, the ages of the kids that I yeah. saw on 
ads on TikTok, man, to create some of these videos. And you're like, man, I want people to create videos to this sound. But Lord, this, I don't know about you, man. You, you look like Yeah, yeah, yeah. Old. It's crazy. So I'm, I'm looking forward to yeah, seeing how this develops, really. So it's uh, sort of come out of nowhere, really. But it has got a lot of scope with this market and obviously maybe maybe a lot of the companies are going to turn their attention towards the the children's market now uh, yeah i'm with you man i'm looking forward to it it is one of those things where when it gets announced it's like okay that was random i had no idea that was in the works and then you just have to wait to see where they go with it because i don't see any remnants of any direct hints i can you know have the hypothesis that I, that we kind of talked about but yeah, I, I have no idea where they're going with it. <laughs> yeah, no idea, but we love it anyway. Yeah, it's uh, going to be good to watch. But I think that's, that pretty much covers what I want to deep dive into today. Obviously, a lot of jumping all over the place, but I think we're going to be, the main headline is from Spotify's side is that streaming is still on the up and they're still growing. So the industry, you know, is it's doing, it's doing okay. It obviously, it's taking a massive hit, particularly in the live sector. But look, we have got the streaming to fall back on that isn't so heavily impacted at this time. Well, yeah, it's been an interesting month, man. I, I, I love these stories, actually. Looking forward to some more. For sure. All right. Music yep. news matters, everybody. As always, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. All that good stuff. Be cool. Peace. Bye. It's the network. Oh. Woo! <laughs>